Hi, so today we're going to talk about equine pulmonary function and why it's important. And um, first I want to talk about the main overall purpose of the lung, which is to bring outside oxygen and um, intake it so it can eventually diffuse into the blood and it could be used for metabolism. Um, but why it's important is mostly because, uh, especially with sport horses, um, when there's a dysfunction uh, with the equine pulmonary or lung function, it can result in a maximum of um, decrease in performance for sport horses. So um, since you can't see the lung and it's inside, it's, a lot of the time it's hard to diagnose a disorder with it, which we're going to talk about later. And it's a heavy research topic just because the lung is so complex that the, um, the research in it is very, very prominent. So first we're gonna talk about the anatomy overview. And I just wanna talk a little bit about how the air gets in. Um, and it's gonna start from the nares, which is over here. And then the air is gonna go in through the nares, down through the trachea, where it eventually gets dropped off into this big organ, which is the lung. The lung, in the horse's case, is very large and takes up about, a, or basically a majority of the thoracic cavity. And another important thing that diff that horses differ uh, from like humans or dogs or cats is that they actually can't breathe through their mouth. So all the air that they take in has to go through their nose. Okay, this is a picture of a horse's lungs when they're blown up with air. And um, the side farthest from us is actually the horse's head, where this um, side closest to us is the opposite of the head, so <laughs> the end of the thoracic cavity. And another important thing to uh, note is that if these lungs were still inside the horse, the horse would be in what's called dorsal recumbency, which just means that the horse would be laying on its back. Um, and I think that's it. That one. So this I thought was really cool because it's really relatable. Um, the lung volume in a human is around 6 liters, but the lung volume in a horse can be up to 55 liters for a maximum. And another thing I wanted to point out was the air speed when horses or whoever, well, we're talking about horses here, but when they intake air, the speed of it, in a hair dryer, I'm pretty sure it's relatable. Everyone kind of knows what that feels like. And the average of that is around 40 liters per second. But with a horse, it's double that and it can be as much as 80 liters per second. So it definitely, the horses are made to move a lot of air at high speeds. So this is a picture of a one gallon jug and I'm going to give you some ratios here but uh, basically this one gallon jug um, is four liters and we talked earlier that the horse's lung can hold up to 55 liters so that means it's approximately 13 of these gallon jugs is how much air can be in an equine lung um, so the total surface area of diffusion is amazing and so amazing that I'm going to show you next. The lung um, surface area can actually take up to about half of a football field, which obviously is insane because football fields are huge. So to give you um, some numbers to back that fact up, um, 240... <laughs> 2,457 meters squared is equal to 26,000 square feet, and a football field is 46,000 square feet. So half of this is 46 or 26,000 square feet, or 2,457 meters, which is the equivalent of an equine lungs surface area. So now we're going to break up the lung into a little bit more detail. Uh, but to go back kind of how we started, a little bit of review, the oxygen is taken in through the nares, goes down only through the nose, <laughs> goes down through the trachea, and then before we just set into this lung, but now we're going to break up the lung. 
into a whole bunch of different parts of its anatomy. Um, so, after the trachea, it gets broken up right here, and these are called, the, this is like the bronchus, and there's a left and a right bronchus, and these sacs at the end of all the bronchioles, which is a group of these bronchus, so kind of like this. Sometimes they call it the, bronchi, the bronchus tree, so that's like a good way to remember it, I think. But these are all called alveoli, and um, approximately there could be 21 forks in the road per se before they get to the end, the oxygen gets to its end, which is the alveoli. Um, and another important thing to mention is as uh, the tubes get smaller down here, as they get deeper, uh, they get thinner in the wall so the oxygen can diffuse easily, easier when it gets to here and uh, the tubes, act, the airways actually get smaller in diameter as well. Okay, so before we saw a group of alveoli, and this is a single alveolus. So that's some vocab for you. It's important to keep track of how that's happening. Um, so outside of every alveolus, or alveoli, I guess, or both, however you want to look at it, is capillaries, which is a small blood vein. And uh, that is actually all around here. That's how um, the gaseous diffusion actually takes place. So um, air comes through here. The O2 is going to come in from the alveolus to the capillaries, and then uh, directly from the capillaries, CO2 goes back into the alveolus, and that's going to happen all the way around here. So as the capillaries move, it's becoming more oxygen concentrated, and then as we get up here, this is more CO2 concentrated. Um, and there are millions of these in the equine lungs, so that's how the gaseous exchanges happen so quickly. Um, now we're going to talk about some equine pulmonary disorders. We're going to talk about three of them. Um, the first one is inflammatory airway disease. The second one is rheumatoid, or not rheumatoid, recurrent airway obstruction. And the last one is equine pulmonary hemorrhage. And the important thing to note is that um, these disorders I'm going to talk about go further and further deep into the lung. So the first one is um, not the deepest, so <laughs> closest to the nares. Um, so inflammatory airway disease, um, this is most common in racehorses. It actually occurs in 50% of racehorses, so it's very common. And that's just because um, this is basically just junk that doesn't belong there and it can easily get into the airway because, or into the trachea, also the airway, but it can easily get in here just because if the horse isn't in front and they're in the back, um, the dirt that gets kicked up at them and they're breathing really, really hard, that dirt all ends up in here. It can cause inflammation and can cause some, a little bit of um, discharge in here. So some symptoms um, is poor performance, obviously, because the gaseous exchanges are not as um, successful because of all of the stuff that's in there and all the inflammation. Um, coughing is pretty common, especially after exercise. And if it gets really bad, nasal discharge um, can happen just because the diameter of the airway gets so small and the O2 gets so little that it has nowhere to go but out, basically. So our next one is recurrent airway obstruction. Um, and as you can see, this is we're getting into the bronchioles here. Before we were in the trachea, and this is deeper in the lung into um, the bronchioles. And this actually has a couple different um, nicknames, so in case you think, don't think you've heard of it, but you might have. Um, and that's heaves, equine asthma, and pneumonia. Um, so important thing to point out is that this normally occurs in older horses. Uh, more commonly in older horses and it can be because of any type of allergen that the horse is surrounded with so a good way to prevent things like this is um, to make sure wherever you're keeping your horse has a lot of air flow through in it and out of it um, and a lot of people feed on hay nets and that can actually um, cause this to more likely happen it can hay nets can make them more susceptible to this so that's another thing, just because the dust and stuff that gets 
inside the stalls or on the hay nets can actually really cause irritation for them in the bronchioles. Um, so some symptoms for RAO uh, would be increased nasal flaring. So that's just if your horse is um, at rest, obviously, and like if they're working really, really hard to breathe in and out through their nose, that's probably not normal. So this could definitely be a possibility. Um, coughing as well, just because of all the irritation. Increased respiratory rate, these two are kind of hand in hand. Um, but if the nasal flaring isn't apparent, but you do see um, an increased respiratory rate in like the stomach air or in the back of the thoracic cavity, then you can definitely um, infer that there's an increased respiratory rate. Heaves, um, that can be, there's like an indent in the thoracic cavity. That's something if you're more interested in, I would really suggest looking up because it can get pretty severe. Um, and the main result in older horses that are just really around allergens all the time and suffer from RIO is just really a limited activity because they have to work twice as hard to do not as much. Okay, and our last um, disorder is equine pulmonary hemorrhage, and we're actually all the way in the lung now, so this disease you might not even see from outside of your horse because all of this is in the lung. This is a blown up picture of the lung. Um, it's often exercise induced, and what happens is the alveoli get a decrease in um, diameter, well not just the alveoli, but the trachea can suffer from this too, the bronchioles, but the alveoli is where you can see it the most because it's start it starts off being the smallest, so a decrease in diameter can really have a large effect. Um, an increase in thickness in the alveoli also occurs. So an increased diameter, or decreased diameter, I'm sorry, increased thickness can result in an increase of pressure in the capillaries, which is why these blood vessels um, occur. So this is just a increase of blood. Um, so some symptoms for that. Uh, as I said, it's invisible to the outside world just because it's so internal. Um, increased blood in lungs, which obviously results in a major poor performance. Now we're getting a little more severe. Um, and in very extreme cases, if the blood really, really is getting super built up and has nowhere to go, it can result in nasal bleeding, which actually, if it's extreme, can result in epitaxis. Um, but a lot of, or a big problem with nasal bleeding is, yes, um, you can... Um, yes, there is blood coming out of the nose, but you have no idea where that came from. So it could be equine pulmonary hemorrhage or an increase in blood from wherever it could actually get here because there's a lot of things <laughs> that uh, connect to the nares right here. Um, so I thank you for watching and I hope you learned something interesting. And that's it. <laughs>